Good morning, everyone. We welcome you in worship today at Coronado Community United Methodist. We're going to invite you to take a deep breath in and let it out as we prepare our hearts for worship. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am I just have to say that was my mother's favorite hymn and mine, and I would always play the piano, and she and I would harmonize. So that really brings back memories. <clears throat> the scripture reading for this morning is Psalm chapter 46, verses 1 through 3 and 10 through 11. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Jesus is our hope, our cornerstone. We invite you to stand as you're able. Let's join in singing together. My hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and a righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Sing again, my hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm.
Pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for the ability to gather together today after Hurricane Milton. There is work to be done, and we ask you to give continued strength to our utility workers from near and far, as well as all others who have helped rescue and those helping in recovery here, as well as across the state. Let us help those still in need, as you have taught us to do. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Take a little extra time to greet folk. We've got a room full of storm survivors this morning. So be sure to greet one another. It's good to see all of you. Peace be with you. We're glad you're here. Before we get to our morning offering, I I just want to let you know a couple of things that have been going on related to the storm. Uh, Prior to the storm, we had a a large group of volunteers here on campus to help prep the buildings for the storm and uh, to board up the boutique that was part of the prep. And so there was also a big group of volunteers that was here after the storm, uh, cleaning up all the debris. Uh, so that we could have worship today. And so if you were, if you were part of those teams helping with cleanup would you, or, or prep before the storm, if you, would you stand where you are so we can say thank you? Yep, there you are. Thank you, and we thank God for you. Um, also, just wanted to say how, how absolutely proud I was of our neighborhood project team. Uh, We have uh, divided the congregation into 22 neighborhoods that we serve in Edgewater and New Smyrna and Port Orange. And over each of those neighborhoods, there's a neighborhood captain. And so those captains were making phone calls prior to the storm. And then after the storm, they started making phone calls again to check in on people and just did a beautiful job. Last Sunday, uh, as I was heading home, Uh, I noticed there was a message on my phone and my neighborhood captain had called. And I was like, yay, yay. And and so we work really hard to make sure that everybody's names are on those lists. If you did not get a call prior to the storm or post-storm, we want to make sure you're on one of those lists. If you would let me know, we're glad, we're glad to add you in. And um, and so if you're a neighborhood captain, would you, would you stand so we could say thank you to you? Any neighborhood captains in the room? Yep. 
And we've, yeah. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, we have heard many, many stories, and I hope to hear many more about people who are helping their neighbors. Um, I, I heard one story that there was somebody cooking hot meals for the power line workers because they had been working around the clock uh, since the storm happened. Um, I know somebody else in our congregation who has a chainsaw and found out that the folks on Cracker Creek, that they could not get out, that there was a big uh, tree over their way to get out. And so he was out there with his chainsaw making sure that the path was cleared that so the folks could get out. Um, I also know there, there was a lot of folks that have been working at Hacienda, which is one of our neighborhoods in Edgewater. It's a mobile home and manufactured home community. And um, I know uh, lots and lots of folks. They, uh, Dave and Sandy Gallant are part of that team. Uh, Dave and Sandy were in Western North Carolina when Helene hit. They lived in their car for days, used their chainsaw to get out and uh, make it back and made it, made it back to Edgewater just in time for Milton. And when the uh, evacuation notices started coming, uh, basically most of New Smyrna Beach was evacuated, uh, when the evacuation started coming, uh, they chose to stay in their community, like many others, um, because they oversee, uh, oversee is not the right word, um, they're good neighbors to 18 widows that live in Hacienda. And the widows were not going, and so they were not going. And post-storm, uh, Dave and Sandy and so many others have been distributing ice and making meals and tarping roofs and making sure generators have the fuel that they need. And Sandy said this. She said, please pray for us, for Dave. He just never stops, and I worry about him so. God, bless him. God blessed him with the biggest heart. I'm so proud to be his wife of 40 years. And, and I know there are just tons more stories like that happening. Um, all around our community. Um, if you need help, if, if you need help with, you've got too much stuff in your yard, you know, debris, if you need help with, um, you got flooded, we've, we've got at least three homes in the congregation that I know of that are flooded, and you need folks to help muck you out, um, please let us know. Uh, we're collecting that information. We've got people that can go out and assess, and we can build a team and come and help. We can help connect you to resources. All of those things can happen. If you are at a point where you are ready to give help, you are ready to help, uh, we need to know that as well. Uh, our sister church in Port Orange, First United Methodist Church in Port Orange, they have put out a call for help. There's serious flooding in Port Orange, and so they have homes that need to be mucked out and, and other things that, that they need help with. Um, if you need a flood bucket, we can give you a flood bucket today. Um, if, uh, if you have uh, extra large t-shirts at your house that you are ready to depart with, we received an email from Karen who works at the Hum Food Pantry. They will be collecting large t-shirt, extra large t-shirts for our homeless community, and so you bring them to us, we will get them to Karen, and Karen will help distribute those. Um, also, if you would like a, to make a donation towards storm recovery, uh, you can make your check out to the church and write storm recovery or disaster recovery in the memo, and uh, on the envelope, we will make sure it goes into that account and people get helped with it, or you can do it online. Uh, you can go to our website and go to the online giving portion, and there's a drop-down menu where it says storm, uh, storm recovery uh, or disaster recovery, something like that, and you can give through that. So either of those ways will work. Um, I, I am so grateful for all of you, and we have, we have this moment right now to uh, be there to listen for people to people who need somebody to talk to. We have this moment to uh, put our faith into action and to help people out. Um, it, is, it, is a, um, it is time for us time for us to be who we are. I'd like to invite the ushers forward for our morning offering.
God, we bless you and praise you and thank you. We thank you for the grace of being able to gather here. We thank you for uh, the grace of um, electricity or electricity that is coming, for a safe place or a safe place that is coming, for neighbors caring for one another, for your presence in the midst of it all. We ask that you would bless and accept and multiply this offering, that through it many may be helped, many may know how much they are loved by you and loved by us. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Amen. One of the things that really encouraged me as we were preparing for the storm and as we're recovering from the storm uh, was to hear from our sister churches in Cuba. We have 12 sister churches in Cuba, and uh, you can be a pen pal uh, for one of our Cuban pastors or a member of, of their church. Uh, we communicate through Facebook Messenger. Uh, we communicate through WhatsApp. Uh, sometimes we'll get an email, and Google Translate translates it if you don't speak Spanish. Um, which is super helpful, and we'll translate your response into Spanish if you don't speak Spanish, which is really helpful. And, and so I got, I got this uh, message from Pastor Giovanni, who is the pastor of our sister church in Colombia, Cuba, and he said this. He said, Pastor, I'm very happy that God's grace has been poured out on you. We 
we were praying to the Lord to have mercy. And when I saw some reports on the news, I prayed with tears before God. I am so happy that you have not suffered any harm. The Lord continue to pour out abundant blessing, receive our greetings and affection. And, and so to know that, that when, when the storm comes, uh, there, there are people praying. There are people praying uh, around the United Methodist Connection. There are people praying all over the Christian family tree. There are folks who love us and care for us in Cuba that are praying. And it make, for me, it makes a big difference knowing that. Um, our scripture today, Psalm 46, beginning at verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. How many of you are, are, that's your kind of testimony for today, right? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Absolutely. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. Therefore, we will not fear. Um, it's okay if you were afraid. That, that does not make you unfaithful. That in no way uh, questions you, questions your faith, questions your relationship with God, questions the power or the refuge or the strength of God. It doesn't. It doesn't. One of the important things we need to do when we walk through a situation like this is that we need to walk through what's called the emotional toll booth. The emotional toll booth is when we recognize, it's when we are just plain old honest with everything that we were feeling as the storm was coming, everything we were feeling during the storm, and everything we are feeling now that we are in recovery mode. And, and so many of us, what we want to do is, instead of, instead of walking through the toll booth, what we want to do is we want to get busy and go around the toll booth, <laughs> right? Or we want to get back on our phone <laughs> and get distracted, right? Uh, we want to get busy. We want to get distracted. And, and yes, there are things to do. But walking through that toll booth is... is an essential spiritual practice, being honest. Um, you know, how, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And it's okay if you're feeling more than one thing at once. Maybe, maybe you're here this morning and you're like, I am grateful. I am grateful that my home's okay. I'm grateful the power's back on. I'm grateful we didn't flood. We didn't have any damp. Maybe that's you. Um, or I'm grateful it was only a little bit. It, maybe that's you. That's okay. Maybe, maybe there was a tremendous amount of concern leading up to the storm or a tremendous amount of concern now that the storm is over. I, I grew up in Tampa. My sister still lives there. And so, you know, it was aiming for Tampa at one point. Um, I served a congregation in St. Petersburg for nine years. Our girls grew up there. And so we have dear ones who live in St. Petersburg. The congregation that I served prior to being your pastor was Trinity United Methodist in Sarasota, Florida. The closest United Methodist congregation to Siesta Key. Two miles from Siesta Key. One of, one of my clergy sisters, um, I have a clergy covenant group that there are six of us in. One of my covenant sisters is the pastor of First United Methodist Church in Bradenton, Florida. Another one of my covenant sisters followed me at Trinity in Sarasota. She's there. Another one of my covenant sisters lives in Western North Carolina. So, yeah, you know. And, and so maybe, maybe you have genuine concern for folks you know and folks you love. Or maybe you just have genuine concern because you've seen the destruction and the chaos that's left. And, and you, you're, you're empathetic. You're imagining what that might be like. And you're wondering, how can I help? And, and, and we can connect you with ways to help. 
And so maybe it's concern. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe it's fear. I, I remember, um, you know, the storm was coming through and, you know, I'm wide awake in bed, you know, and I was just listening to the wind. And I kept wondering, you know, is that just wind or has it become a tornado? You know, because torna- we had seen tornadoes were hitting various places across the state. Um, whatever you're feeling, if you are feeling gratitude, if you are feeling concern, if you are, are feeling fear, if you're confused, wondering, anxious, whatever it is, all of those are faithful. And you can be feeling more than one at once. And so we, we take them to God. God, you are my refuge and you are my strength. When I am feeling whatever that feeling is, God, God, you, you are our refuge and strength. You know, the folks who are in long-term recovery mode and folks who are, you know, still in the process, God, you know, that is what we do. That is who we are. That is faithful. That is faithful. All of that. All of that is faithful. My friend, uh, Jan Richardson, she, uh, she is a beautiful... Um, artist, visual artist, and she writes just the most beautiful books. She lives in the Winter Park area of Florida. And this is her blessing the chaos from her book, The Cure for Sorrow. To all that is chaotic in you, let there come silence. Let there be a calming of the clamoring, a stilling of the voices that have laid their claim on you, that have made their home in you, that go with you even to the holy places, but will not let you rest, will not let you hear your life with wholeness or feel the grace that fashioned you. Maybe that's what you're experiencing. Maybe you're experiencing the, the hamster wheel of, of thoughts right now. Thoughts that will not let you rest. And so you're like, God, help me, help my mind rest. Help my soul rest. Help me to hear what is true. Jan goes on. Let what distracts you cease. Let what divides you cease. Let there come to an end what diminishes and demeans, and let depart all that keeps you in its cage. Let there be an opening. When we're honest, that's what happens. There's an opening. Let there be an opening into the quiet that lies beneath the chaos. Where you will find the peace you did not think possible and see what shimmers within the storm. Storms are powerful. We know that. We recognize that. There's a power in the destruction that they can bring, but there is a power in the beauty of them. There's a power in the clarity that they can bring, the things that they can help us see and realize about ourselves. Uh, we, We were without power probably 35 to 40 hours Um, Our neighborhood was absolutely fine, but in order to get to a major road, we couldn't. The roads were flooded. And and Ed could get there in his his truck, but I could not get out in my car. And, And so I couldn't turn on my computer, you know, and do some work. I, you know, it was a little bit I could do on my phone, but we didn't have power, and I couldn't get anywhere, and I was just like, eh, right? Because I'm the pastor, I'm supposed to be helping, I'm supposed to be doing, you know? And it was like, there are other people helping and doing. 
all those neighborhood captains are helping and doing. All, all these folks taking care of one another are helping and doing. And it just made me realize I need, I need to get back in and start practicing how to be still again. How, how to be still and, and let others. How to be still and claim God as refuge and strength. How to be still in that. And this, and this psalm talks about it. Uh, verse 10, be still and know that I am God. If I'm honest, I think, I think part of that, part of that un- inability to be still is, is I need to trust God more. You know? Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is with us and in us and working through us. And it is through the stillness that we are then able to help. It's not just stillness or help, it's both. It's not just trust and prayer, it is also action. Be still and know that I am God. God is our refuge, God is our strength. A very present help. The stillness helps us hear and sense the presence of God who is with us in the storm, God who is with us in the prep, God who is with us in the recovery, God who is with us in the helping, God who is with us in the praying. This is who we are. Let's all sing together really sing this prayer this morning. God, our refuge, and God, our strength. We thank you for the revealing that comes with the storm. We thank you for revealing places where we need your help and growth. We thank you for revealing the ways that we can help others. We pray that you would help us to be able to sit at your feet like Mary of Bethany, to sit and be still and receive and listen. And we pray that you would help us when it is time to be Martha, to get up and serve and serve well. God, we thank you for your steadfast love and faithfulness. We thank you for your saving power. We thank you for your protection and your deliverance. We thank you for grace upon grace. Your peace surpasses all we need and understand. Guard our hearts with your peace. Guard our minds with your peace. Guard all those displaced and devastated by the storm with your peace. Guard all who are exhausted from the work of saving lives and property. 
for the first responders and the rescue workers and the medical personnel, for the power workers and the water workers and the city officials, and for all who are helping neighbors. Focus our attention and hope on your goodness and your truth and your promises. All are at work in your world. All are at work in us, in our situation this very moment. You are at work wherever there is a need of help and hope. Sustain us and sustain all the survivors. Grant us the means and the capacity to help the suffering. Empower us to persevere in doing good, no matter the season or the situation. May your compassionate and healing power flow through us now and always. I invite your prayers, silently or loud. Thank you for hearing our prayers. And thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask this in his strong name, praying as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, we have several announcements. First of all, we'll celebrate All Saints Day on Sunday, October 27th. If you've had a loved one die within the last year, we'd be honored to include their picture in the remembrance. Please get the picture to Pastor Lisa by Tuesday, October 22nd. Digital pictures are preferred. Next, we're excited to offer a men's breakfast on Saturday, October 26th at 8.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. The speaker is Annie Roddenberry, a regional habitat restoration biologist with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. She will speak about FWC, its role in protecting the Indian River Lagoon, and her personal path in that role. The cost is $5 per person. Please register in advance today in the Connect Center or through the church office. Thanks for inviting a friend. Join us on Monday, October 21st, for a local Methodist heritage tour of the Howard Thurman Home and Bethune-Cookman University. We'll meet in the church parking lot at 8.45 a.m. and ride the church bus. We'll return in the early afternoon following lunch. Register today in the Connect Center or through the church office. And last is our next Lunch and Learn will be held this Thursday, October 17th, in the Fellowship Hall. At 11.30 a.m., we'll hear Dr. Andrew Gigi speak on a surgeon's guide to seafood. Lunch will follow at 12.15. The cost is $5 per person. Please register in advance through the church office during the week or today in the Fellowship Hall. 
all are welcome. Thank you, Sharon. Even though we walk through the valley, our God is with us. I invite you to stand as you're able. Let's sing it together.
beloved of God, what is our mission? Building community rooted in God's love, inviting all to grow in Christ, engaging with service and compassion. Friends, we hope that you will stick around for a little while, that you will have a great conversation with someone, uh, be a good listener for someone who may need to share some things. If you can help or if you need help, uh, please see me before you go. We, I've, I'm making a list of those things today, and uh, that would be super helpful. And so go. Go now in peace. Go to love. Go to serve. Go with the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join with us in our closing chorus. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. Never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. everyone.